So when you're using these equations, notice how I have to keep putting in these subscripts. Here I'm talking about the battery, and here I'm talking about the lamp. So you have to do each of those very step by step. And then again, we want to be careful to try to use the most convenient of these equations. Neither of these is convenient for the resistor because we haven't figured out what happened to the voltage across the resistor. We could do that, but we don't need that because we can just use this equation instead. This is the simpler equation here because this term we know is constant for the resistor and it's not too hard to figure out what happened to the current. So before we could work out the lamp, we had to figure out what was happening to the battery. And then that told us because the current in the battery is the same as the current across the lamp. So I think, I think that's pretty tricky already. Let's try to be a little bit more specific here. Let's say that the current here, let's say that the current has gone up by a factor of two. How much will the power increase by? By a factor of what? Four. Four, not two, but two squared, because the current here is squared. Or let's say that the current across the lamp has gone up by a factor of three. How much will the power on the lamp have gone up by? Nine. Nine. Not three, but three squared. That's another common way that this is tested. So let's put some more details in here. We know that the resistance here has increased. Well, let's say that the total resistance has increased by a factor of two. In that case, by what factor has the current decreased? And for that, we can use this equation. Oh, oh so then it's just the same by two. We can see from this equation that there is that I and R are inversely proportional, because V is constant. So what this tells us is that if we're multiplying R by 2, we have to divide I by 2. Otherwise, these couldn't be equal to each other. So if the resistance is being multiplied by 2, then the current would be being divided by 2. And then what happens to the power across the lamp? It's divided by what? Oh, because then the, the resistance went up by 2, but then the the I goes down by four. Careful, the I went down by two. By two, but then isn't squared. But then what happens to the power? Power is divided by, by two. Take your time. <clears throat> We've decided that the resistance was multiplied, we're supposing the resistance was multiplied by two. Yeah. Do you agree then that the current has been divided by two? Yeah. All right, in that case, we know that the power is going down, it's being divided, but what's it being divided by? Is it not four? Yeah, it is four. Maybe you were thinking the right thing and saying the wrong thing. Did I say four? No. Okay. So first, so yeah, I think you were probably thinking the right thing and saying the wrong thing. So first of all, I think you said something like the current went down by four. Maybe what the power was down by four. Oh, I guess I kind of answered. Yeah. yeah, so it's important to realize these are all different concepts. So we have to be very clear about when we're talking about resistance, when we're talking about current, and when we're talking about power. Possibly I got a little confused there too. But anyway, these are the correct numbers over here. So the key thing is the change in the resistance is the same as the change in the current, because these are inversely proportional, or at least they're inverse to each other. But the change in the current is related by a square to the change in the power. And again, this is a very common type of question here. So you have to work this out on paper, step by step. So let's do another example. Let's say that the equivalent resistance was multiplied by three. It increased by a factor of three. Well, then we know the current is going to decrease, but it's going to decrease by what factor? Um, so that would go down by three. So we would have to divide the current by three. And we know then that the power will be divided, but it will be divided by a factor of what? Nine. That's right. Good. Now one more application. Let's say that the lamp here originally had a resistance of R. And let's say that the new resistor has the same resistance of R. So we're putting in the new resistor res with the resistance of R. So what's going to happen to our equivalent resistance? Is it going to go up or down? But by what factor? By two. That's right. How could we work that out? Well.
when resistors are in series, the resistances just add. So, and we know that in this case, both resistances are R. So the new resistance is just twice the original resistance. So the equivalent resistance here has been multiplied by two. So what's going to happen to our total current? It's going to be multiplied or divided. Divided by two. Right? And what's going to happen then to the power across the lamp? Divided by four. That's right. And this, again, is a very common type of question here, where they just give you R for the resistances, and then you have to figure out the power of change over here. So by the way, so if we, if we put in two resistors of 2R, that's twice as much resistance. Suppose we put in three, resistance, three resistors with the resistance of R. Then the resistance would go up by a factor of 3. Or if you put in 10 resistors, then the resistance has increased by a factor of 10. And then the current would have been falling by a factor of 10, and the power would fall by a factor of 100. Okay, those are some very important points there. The, the hardest part here was to remember that you have to apply these equations separately to the different devices. So now let's think about another type of change. You're pretty sure to see a circuit question like this on the test, so it's important to be very clear in our minds about this. So let's say we take the original circuit, and then we add a new resistor along this path. And we want to ask, what's going to happen to the power across the lamp? This is our before picture, and this is our after picture. What's going to happen to the power across the lamp when we add this new resistor along this path? So the resistance will divide by 2. If they're equal resistances, yeah. that's right. So let's start by just saying qualitatively, because in the problem here, in this particular problem, they're not really, I don't think they're saying how big the resistors are. So let's do it qualitatively first, and then we can do it quantitatively. But that was a good start. So in any case, uh, so, what, so what were you saying then qualitatively? So the, the resistors will go down. Good. So the I will go up and the power will go up. So what's the answer? The power will increase. They had a lot of good thoughts there. One of your biggest mistakes is you did that uh, and verbally and not on paper. So let's try writing out those steps. I mean, should I say about what factor? Let's not put in the factors yet. Yet, um, one thing to make keep in mind is the uh, the problem with your analysis is I think again you weren't thinking separately about different devices. Okay. We have to think separately about each device. So we never want to say say we never want to say something like the current goes up. We have to say the current from where, and we never want to say the resistance goes up. We want to say the resistance from where and the power from where. So let's take that more slowly. So, who, so we started with the resistance. Now, whose resistance is going up? Is the lamp's resistance going up, or is the re equivalent resistance perceived by the battery going up? Equivalent. Yeah. Oh, by the way, is that resistance going up or down? I think you said it correctly. It's going down. So I should have said the equivalent resistance perceived by the battery now is going down. We know that when we put resistors in parallel, the resistance goes down, because now there's more paths for the electricity to flow through. Yeah. What was the next part of your logic? So the, the, the current. Let's see, that's right. The current from the battery would go up. Now, that now turns out, however, not to be very helpful to us anymore. And the reason it's not helpful is some of this current will go to this resistor, and some of this current will go to the lamp. And so it's hard to tell what's happening to the current across the lamp. So let me give you a different way to think about this. We know that the res total resistance is going down. Well, we don't even need this here. That won't even help us. These problems are tricky. All right, I 
turns out this is not the easiest way to think about this. The easiest way to think about this now is to focus on the voltage across the lamp. <clears throat> when we put this new resistor in here, does the voltage across the lamp increase, decrease, or stay the same? Does it matter if the resistors are the same? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Does it depend on if the resistors are the same? I don't think so, no. Is it? When we put this new resistor in, does the voltage drop across the lamp increase, decrease, or stay the it same? Doesn't change. It Pardon? Same? Yeah, how do you know it doesn't change? Because it's like they're skiing down the different paths. That's right. So for example, it's let's say this is a five volt battery. If this is a five volt battery, what's the voltage drop across the lamp? Now, we're assuming it's still the same battery here. 